Hello and welcome back to the lab. So on the bench today, we have this interesting little vintage device. It's called a portable potentiometer, model R59A. This was given to me by the same friend who gave me that jukebox amplifier. He said he didn't know what it was, but he found it on his property in Nebraska. And he said if I wanted it, I could have it. And he was sure that I would make some good use of it. And what this device is, apparently, from what I can gather, is um, a device that measures the small potential that comes out of thermocouples that are placed inside of a grain silo to measure the temperature of the grain in the grain silo to check for uh, spoilage or microbial activity within the grain. Um, I guess that's what this is used for. And you can select one of 18 different thermocouples that are distributed in various places throughout the grain silo. Um, this is a it's, a, it's a potentiometer, right? And uh, you adjust the knob for a null on the gal galvanometer and you read the temperature of that thermocouple directly off the dial in degrees Fahrenheit. I guess that's how it works. Um, it's not currently functional. And uh, I will probably do a complete restoration of this unit at, at another date. Um, I don't have a lot of documentation on this, but I'll probably do some reverse engineering and draw up a schematic and uh, figure out why it's not working and uh, get, it, get it working again. And we'll most likely do a video of that at a future date. I don't have a need for something like this, of course, but uh, I, I will just do it as a fun little project. What I really wanted to talk about today was not this device, but what I found inside of this instrument, which is something really quite fascinating and something that I might have a use for. I don't know if I have a use for that either, but something fascinating anyway and something fun to play with. So let me take the screws out of it and I'll show you what I found inside. Okay, so I removed all the screws from the front panel and carefully removed the two Bakelite inserts from the front panel and set them aside. And inside, this is what I find. A Weston standard cell. This is a, a chemical battery, a one cell battery, that puts out a precise standard voltage of about 1.018 volts. Very precise and very stable and uh, it was used as a primary voltage standard from its invention, I guess in the 1890s, uh, all the way up through about 19, um, through about 1970, I guess these were used as a primary voltage standard. And one of these Western cells was inside this portable potentiometer. Very interesting. I, I've never owned one before, and I wanted to take a closer look at this particular device. Okay, so here we have the actual drawing from the Edward Weston's patent for the Weston cell. And uh, I, I'm not a chemist, but I'm going to try to explain uh, what's inside the, the Weston cell. It's an H-shaped glass uh, tube um, with two chambers and a, and a horizontal piece that connects the two. Um, on one side we have, um, in the anode side, we have only uh, mercury at the bottom. And in the cathode side, we have an amalgam of mercury and cadmium. And, and the electrolyte is uh, cadmium sulfate. And uh, somehow the chemistry provides a chemical reaction that provides exactly 1.018 uh, volts. I think that's the actual voltage. Um, that comes out of the electrodes at the top uh, through platinum wires that are that pass through the glass and they're sealed in the glass, right? So th these are all, um, you know, toxic chemicals. So um, if you get your hands on a Western cell, you want to make sure not to break the glass because really bad things can happen. And you don't want to be um, disposing of these things in, in a landfill or anything like that. It's uh, toxic stuff. So that means I can't just toss my, my Western cell out. I'm going to have to take good care of it um, for for eternity, actually. <laughs> right? So that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, but uh, that's how the Western cell works. Um, 
the, the, the precise standard voltage that comes out is only precise and standard if you draw absolutely no current from the cell. Um, if you start drawing any current from the cell at all, the voltage is no longer precise or standardized. And if you draw more than the tiniest amount of current, like in the nanoamp range, if you draw more than, say, a nanoamp or something of current out of the Western cell, you can permanently damage the Western cell. Um, so, um, the way these were typically used, and the way they should always be used, actually, is with a nulling voltmeter, such as the 419A that I um, repaired in the previous videos. Um, so that when you're actually measuring the voltage, what you're measuring is not the voltage from the cell itself, but the bucking voltage that you used to null out this cell against another source of voltage and you're measuring that voltage and so you're only ever drawing current from that voltage which makes your measurement an infinite impedance measurement because you will draw no current from the western cell itself and uh, that's the way the precise voltage is usually measured and now with <clears throat> excuse me now with today's modern voltmeters um that have input impedances in the tens of gig ohms or hundreds of gig ohms range um, you don't need to worry so much about that you're not going to be drawing enough current using those types of high impedance input impedance uh, voltmeters to to do any damage to to the western cell so what i was hoping to try to do today is take a measurement of my Western cell and see if it actually does still put out 1.018 volts. So let's do that now. Okay, so taking a look at my Western cell, you can see the um, H-shaped glass. Um, there is the, the electrolyte inside and the two electrodes, the anode and the cathode are at the bottom with the toxic chemicals and stuff inside. Um, these, these cells were mainly made by the Epley Laboratory Incorporated. And uh, this one has the original um, serial number tag and the original calibration date and the original EMF measured voltage on the Western cell. Um, it says December 15th, 19... 58. So this is from 1958. It's uh, what is that? 67 year. It's a 67 year old uh, cell. <laughs> um, I I imagine because it's sealed, it still puts out the correct voltage, but maybe not. We'll, we'll uh, take a look at that in one second. They listed the voltage right on it as EMF equals 1.0194 volts. Now that seems high to me because the standard voltage from a standard Western cell is 1.01830. Um, so I don't know why this one would be higher than that. Um, but that's what they've got written right on the, uh, on the paperwork for this particular uh, cell. So I've hooked up my HP 3455A across it and set to the one volt range and also my HP 3456A also set to the one volt range and because we don't want to load the cell down. So these voltmeters on the one volt range and the 10 volt range actually um, have almost an infinite input impedance uh, on the order of greater than 10 gig ohms or 100 gig ohms on the input impedance on these voltmeters. So they're not gonna load down this cell or cause any damage to it. Now, if I switch to the 100 volt range, the input attenuators on these voltmeters uh, have a 10 mega ohm impedance, and that is not a high enough impedance to make a direct measurement. That will actually, uh, may actually cause damage to the cell. So we don't want to use these voltmeters on the 100 volt range or the 1000 volt range. 
So we'll use them on the one volt range and they will be safe to use with the Weston cell. Now that, for that reason, you don't want to make a measurement with an ordinary voltmeter, like a little fluke handheld meter or any of those, um, you know, Chinese imported meters. Um, they all have 10 mega ohm input impedances and they will um, at least be not accurate measurements and they may even cause permanent damage to your Western cell. You certainly don't want to use um, a, an old Heathkit vacuum tube voltmeter or, um, you know, a, a Simpson 260 or anything like that. You don't want to use a VRM to measure your your standard cell. You will damage it permanently. Um, with that, that 20,000 ohms per volt input impedance on those types of voltmeters, you will damage this cell. Um, it's not sufficient. Um, Usually we use a nulling voltmeter like the HB419A to make a measurement. And we actually only measure the nulling voltage. We never actually measure the voltage of the Western cell. But using a high impedance, like an infinite impedance input voltmeter, we can do that. So that's what we've got going on here. And let's take a look at the voltages that we have. All right, so here's the voltages that we're measuring with the 3456A and with the 3455A. Keep in mind that um, neither of these two meters have been calibrated in at least uh, 20 years. <laughs> but they're still quite accurate, even though they've never been officially calibrated and certified in, in, since uh, um, in the early 2000s, I believe. So but they're still quite accurate and they match each other quite well within, it looks like about 10 counts. Um, so I imagine they're both quite accurate. Um, so this is the voltage coming out of the Western cell, 1.01858, something like that. Very close to its voltage that it's supposed to be, but I imagine that this is actually the correct voltage. Um, this particular one is probably the most accurate voltmeter I own. Um, so it's somewhere around this area is what the actual voltage of this Western cell actually measures today. And don't forget, it's, um, it's about 70 years old. It's almost 70 years old. And any battery that can put out voltage after 70 years is a pretty good battery. Um, especially if it puts out almost the voltage that you expect it to put out. So that's my Western cell. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more fun with vintage test equipment and other fun stuff. Thanks again.